Okay, today I'm going to be talking about a disassembled Sony PSX800 BioTracer tone arm. And uh, this is a straight line tracking tone arm. Uh, some people call them linear tracking tone arms. And I want to point out the various parts here so you understand what they are. And uh, we'll start off uh, at the bottom. These are the vertical bearings. Uh, these are 14 ball uh, affairs and they go into this housing right here, one on each side, and they allow the arm to pivot vertically. As you can tell, they're quite large, much, much larger than most any other tone arm that you'll ever encounter. In fact, I do believe they're the largest the industry's ever made. The next thing uh, is going to be uh, this assembly. We have magnets on it. Uh, this is the, uh, the drive magnet. Uh, for the vertical uh, movement of the tone arm. Um, and uh, this is uh, the detection uh, magnet for the vertical positioning of the tone arm. So any position and velocity uh, uh, information uh, needing to be sent through the micro to the microprocessor originates from these magnetic fields and then those fields induce currents into the coil and into the Hall effect sensor. Um, Next up is the horizontal bearings. Uh, these are six ball horizontal bearings. You can, can't see the one on this side, but it's identical to this side, and that allows the tone arm to pivot horizontally. Next up is the horizontal motional feedback detection coil, which is this. This is the uh, horizontal motional feedback uh, Hall effect sensor, uh, this black device here. And this uh, last coil is the horizontal um, drive coil uh, that uh, issues the mechanical corrections for in the horizontal plane uh, that the microprocessor issues uh, to this biotracer tone arm. Uh, this is the main housing right here of the tone arm of course. Uh, these are four magnets uh, that are part of the horizontal motional feedback uh, system and um, other than that I don't know what else we can discuss in this assembly. Next up is the horizontal uh, motional feedback uh, magnetic flux return plate. Uh, that's for the horizontal side and that goes over this area right here and allows the completion of magnetic flux lines uh, to take place. And over here <coughs> is the left side vertical um, uh, motional feedback uh, um, magnetic flux return plate. and. Uh, Here's the right side, same thing, does the same thing. It's a magnetic flux return plate. Uh, this is an auxiliary weight. Uh, there were three different weights uh, that were issued by um, Sony back in, in the day. And um, so uh, these uh, bolt on over the right side uh, magnetic flux return plate and um, that will establish a uh, static uh, um, balance condition for the tone arm. Um, that's not to be confused with the auxiliary balance weights uh, that you can insert through this back bracket here which normally goes back here like so. Okay, Actually I got it upside down, it goes like this. So, But anyway, uh, those auxiliary weights go back here and that's what you know, most people are familiar with on the Sony PSX800. Uh, they l tend to lose these weights, um, but I, I do sell uh, some of my own custom weights for that. Uh, this nylon screw right here establishes the mechanical um, up limit of the tone arm. Uh, it's a stop to prevent it from going, exceeding a certain predetermined height. So that's what we have there. Um, next up is um, the vertical motional feedback uh, velocity sensing coil and the vo vertical motional feedback position sensing Hall effect sensor. Um, this is the uh, vertical motional feedback uh, system. Uh, uh, this is the, the drive coil that uh, actually uh, issues the corrections, the mechanical corrections into the tone arm uh, in the vertical plane. Uh, this, these are slot type photo interrupters that interface with the slit plate that uh, tell the microprocessor where the arm is laterally, uh, left and right, in and out. Um, next up um, is uh, the arm shafts and bearing assemblies. Uh, this bearing assembly fits right in through here, um, like so through there. 
and um, it allows this whole mechanism, the whole carriage, to go in and out, left and right. Okay, and uh, it's comprised of a, a little bearing here, and sometimes these bearings go bad. Uh, they can uh, develop clearance issues and wobble and have axial play and radial play and so forth. But this particular one has a, an even uh, bigger problem. It's got a cracked outer bearing race. And uh, I've positioned that crack at uh, 12 o'clock high noon. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know how well this is going to focus, but we'll give it a shot. The darn thing is cracked. Okay, so sometimes these bearings need to be replaced. Alright, next thing I wanted to show you is uh, the function of this. Uh, uh, Sony does not give this bearing a name uh, or even a part number, but it's uh, what it does is it rides right in this channel here, this groove in this arm shaft, like so. Okay, so as the arm goes left and right in and out, um, it does this and rides in this channel. And its function is is to produce a, a mechanical limit uh, for pitching for uh, the arm pitching, and uh, so it it locates that properly so that the biotracer electronics can have something to work against a reference point. So what happens too is um, these arm shafts come from the factory with a little bit of ripple on the upper and the lower face of this channel. Okay. And when that happens, as you can well imagine, as the arm goes left to right, uh, the arm is going to be pitching um, as it goes left to right, like so. Okay, and uh, so it'll be it'll have a rough movement, and we don't want that. So uh, what I'm doing now on some jobs, if it's required, um, is that I I have to uh, polish this channel, so both the upper and lower faces, and um, and you'll see the difference it makes because this one's been polished and this one has not. Now, if I put this in here <clears throat> without that bearing, uh, you'll see that it uh, moves pretty easily, uh, not really too much of a problem. Okay, and this is uh, with no lubricant whatsoever. Okay, it's completely dry, clean bearing. And uh, same as this, uh, I've cleaned this one as well, no lubricant. I wanted to make them identical so that uh, this comparison would be legitimate. Now, if I put this bearing back in like it's uh, supposed to be, and I do the same test over again, you'll see that um, it tends to stick. see that it's it's pretty unimpressive really and when it does finally start to move I can feel the notchy vibrations uh, being transmitted through the arm shaft into my fingers and uh, of course I can't convey that in the video but I assure you that's what's happening so Okay, so it's it's a bit cantankerous, and that's uh, something that you might see more often than not on most PX, uh, PSX 800s, uh, unless the arm shaft has been polished, which is a very involved process actually, because there's a lot of disassembly involved, as you can see. Very tricky, very risky. And by the way, I do not recommend that anybody disassemble their tone arms. There's just too much risk of damage. These coils have an extremely thin gauge wires. Um, there's just too many ways for this to go wrong. Please do not disassemble your Sony PSX-800 tone arm. This is for professionals only. And I'm not bragging, I'm not being egotistical or anything, but I'm just warning you, you do that, <clears throat> there's a very good chance you're going to regret it, plain and simple. Okay, next thing I want to show you is this. And just to make this test valid, I'm going to remove this and I want to show you that this bearing is indeed in there and I'm not cheating or anything like that. 
So here we go. Um, same uh, end view that I showed you before. And uh, you can see that the bearing is indeed located in there. Let me rotate it so it's crystal clear that the bearing is indeed um, inserted inside this brass sleeve. Okay. All right, everybody convinced? Good. All right, next, I'm going to put this back on. Remember, this has only been cleaned, no lubricant whatsoever. Okay, next, I'm going to show you a comparison of polished versus non-polished. So I've basically optimized this arm shaft and bearing. Okay. Now, I'm kind of having a hard time reaching around this tripod and stuff, but just bear with me on this. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so obviously the unpolished one doesn't want to move very easily. I have to move it at a, and it sticks, see? All right, and again, this has been cleaned and everything, so there's no excuse there for that. Of course, that cracked outer race doesn't uh, help anything, but this shows a hundred percent of the time that the benefits of uh, spending a little bit of time polishing these shafts and making sure you have a good bearing too. So, alright. I mean, I don't know if I need to show you any more on that. But, there's just no comparison. It just doesn't want to behave itself and do what it's supposed to do. Furthermore, it chatters and vibrates, and uh, that's just not ideal. Okay, now um, I want to show you, see if I can get. a good image here of the difference in the polishing ver in the polished versus unpolished now there are some light artifacts going on here I have a uh, 96 LED uh, overhead uh, shop light here and you can see the reflection of uh, light in all those LEDs in the polished shaft Oops, I'm sorry, I'm out of range there. Apologize for that. Anyway, um, okay, so there is a considerable difference in uh, the optics of the polished shaft versus the unpolished. I also polished the outside of it too. That much you can't see so much of. Okay. Again, this one is the one that's polished, all right? So I'm hoping that you'll see the difference. All right, having said that, um, again, it's not this depth uh, dimension here that's important because the bearing never touches that. Uh, it's an inactive part of this whole channel and this arm shaft. What is important 
is the lower and the upper sides of this channel. That's where the bearing touches. Okay. Um, I'm going to be offering this uh, service to uh, disassemble this tone arm, modify it. I'll be adding damping in critical areas, uh, probably a few other alterations, polishing the arm shaft, changing the bearing if necessary, bottom line making sure that this guy, this uh, bearing rides very very smoothly on this arm shaft and does its job properly. So basically you could call it a blueprint job for this. Uh, when I decide on the stipulations uh, of this uh, service I'll go ahead and post it over there at web store where I have all my other services. Um, I don't know what else to show you here uh, that pretty much completes the whole um, job. Uh, another thing that happens is uh, these uh, these horizontal bearings uh, they tend to Brunel so um, that would be included um, in in my service for uh, optimizing these tone arms, disassembling it and doing everything that I've just discussed. Of course the bearings will all be lubricated, everything will be done correctly. <clears throat> okay, well uh, thank you for your time. I hope uh, you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. Thank you. Have a good day.